Welcome, welcome, everybody. I am so pleased to welcome master teacher David Kuhn to the Shift Network. And David is a medical Qigong master and author of Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. He has taught and lectured around the country to both lay people and professionals about the healing power of Qigong. Welcome, David. Thank you, Lee. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's so nice to meet you face to face and in person. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And you were just talking about a, a kind of a coincidence. And I love how Qigong and Qi and working with energy all of a sudden just starts to bring unseen forces together in uh, interesting ways. You know, it, it really is. And, uh, you know, in the sort of law of attraction teachings or the Tao teachings, you know, there's this idea that like attracts like, like water molecules coming together and so on and so forth. And uh, it's interesting because as we uh, battle, some of us anyway, I know I did when I was a kid, sort of battled with the world outside of me and, you know, martial art and self-defense and worried about my neighbor. But as I've gone on in the practices of Qigong and meditation and these types of practices, it's really uh, softened me and helped me to realize that I'm only coming in contact with me. And so the bullies that I came in contact with when I was younger, they were there for a purpose because I was kind of in that state of mind. But literally here I am today with you, Qigong teacher of many years, um, seen your face, heard your name. Uh, literally, I was just telling Lee here off the air that uh, I met someone, well, I, I know someone who knows Lee. We have a mutual acquaintance and we started talking and she was talking about Lee and she was talking about some other teachers. And uh, literally, you know, three weeks later or something, the Shift Network contacted me and said, oh, we'd like you to come on. I said, sure, love to come on. They said, your interviewer is going to be Lee Holden. I said, how cool is that? So here we are. Here we are. Oh, beautiful, David. Tell us a little bit about your story. How, how did you get started in, in Qigong and Qigong practices? I would love to tell you that story. I don't live by that story anymore. I just want to clarify, I don't live there anymore. But I love telling the story because it is a story of very profound transformation. And uh, I think it uh, sets the stage for people to understand how certain things can be done. And so for me, when I was about 12 years old, I was on a hayride, it was a Halloween night. And I literally, uh, we were on this, we were on this uh, trailer being pulled by a Jeep through a forest. Mm. And uh, my buddy and I decided it'd be really funny if we jumped out of the trailer while it was moving and mm. run across the forest and scare everybody on the other side. Mm. And so we did that. And uh, we did scare them. It just didn't work out as we had planned. Um, I jumped up into my buddy jumped in the trailer. I jumped in the trailer. The trailer caught my right leg. It ran over the whole right side of my body. I yelled out a scream. Uh, luckily, the driver didn't even hear it because it would have stopped the flow. Lee. Mm -hmm. the, the flow would have stopped. But the flow kept going. It rolled right over me. Oh, my gosh. And uh, unbelievable. I mean, I blacked out. I was unconscious. Um, I remember coming to the kids, uh, somehow some time went by, the kids came back, they were shaking me saying he's dead, he's dead. I got up, I, I dragged myself, sort of limped myself to the uh, barn, and um, uh, I didn't have any broken bones. Mm. It was unbelievable. Mm. I hid this from my parents. So that's Friday. Come Monday, my parents find out, you know. And so they're like, oh, my God, you know, we're taking you to the doctors and everything. So I go to the doctors. I have abrasions and bruises and everything, but nothing's broken. So fast forward about three years later, uh, routine checkup. They say you're developing scoliosis. So, OK, uh, I'm playing uh, travel team soccer, uh, football. All of a sudden, the pain in my back just starts getting like excruciating and it's like continuing and it's getting worse. And uh, over the course of approximately 13 years, I journeyed this spinal disease. It was with me all the way through and through. Um, I was practicing Qigong martial arts, got introduced to traditional Chinese medicine at that same time period because I was in so much pain. I just went seeking all these alternatives. Western medicine couldn't help me, so on. Uh, so 
uh, from the time I was 15 to 25, even though I was practicing all these fantastic practices, going to acupuncture, going to chiropractors, going to massage, doing so many things to heal myself, eating right, all this kind of stuff, the spine was getting worse. By the time I was 25 years old, they said, your spine looks like you're 85. Mm. They showed me all the x-rays and so on. I had arthritis in my lumbar spine, arthritis in my, in my neck. And at the time I was, uh, I had already gotten about, I think I had finished two black belts in martial arts. Mm. Very, very difficult, a lot of pain. I never would have got through it without the Qigong breathing, without the movements. But here I am at 25 and I still have the spinal disease. Mm. And I'm like, what do I do? You know, like, like this is getting pretty. So you know how it is when you uh, meet a teacher and then that teacher leads you to another teacher and then you learn something and then that teacher opens up another door. As they say in Asia a lot, they say uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, meeting these teachers that were really starting to work with me like a Montauk Chia mm -hmm. on the inner work, the inner work, even deeper than I'd ever gone before. I started doing a lot of breathing practices, even more. I mean, I've been breathing the whole time, but really specific breathing practices, really specific Qigong practices, et cetera. In those three years from 25 to 28 years old, I had a series of experiences of catharsis, mm -hmm. um, energy coursing through my body, colored lights in my head, vibrating sensations that after three years, uh, unbeknownst to me uh, at the time, they had cleared the spinal disease. I didn't know it. I literally was standing by the river. My dad came to visit me. I was living in Colorado at the time. And he said, your spine, it looks straight. What, like, what happened? I subsequently went to get some x-rays and literally it's the first time in my life I ever saw my spine looking normal. Wow. Unbelievable story. What an incredible story. It's, it, it's a, a profound gift of healing. You know, sometimes I think through adversity, we find deeper and deeper layers to our practice. And, you know, what seems so like, important. don't you think? And what seems so like important. the worst thing often gives us the biggest gifts in our lives, you know? And I know for me, I have so a sim true. similar story. I didn't get run over by a tractor, but I had a really yeah. severe back injury during uh, my soccer playing career. Uh, and uh, it just sidelined me. I was so excited. I was playing, you know, varsity soccer. And all of a sudden, second game of the season, I'm out. And, you know, the cortisone shots and the painkillers did nothing for me. And it wasn't until I started getting into the Qigong practice where that profound healing really comes in. And, it, and sometimes it really takes something severe to be able to motivate you or to really dive into this practice in a, in a deeper, deeper way. Um, you know, is that why you, you, you know, really recommend a daily Qigong practice? Can you talk to us a little bit about the practice, the motivation, how to keep consistent with uh, our goals and, and what can Qigong do for, for all of us? Absolutely. Uh, number one, I think one of the, the amazing things about Qigong is that anybody pretty much can do it. Yeah. You could be in a wheelchair and if you can move your arms, if you can move your breath, you can do it. And yes, there's certain things you maybe can't perform, but overall, Qigong as a whole can be, be performed by anyone, any age, any time. And so this is number one, uh, the reason that it's so profound. I have a vast background in the martial arts and uh, have studied that quite uh, in depth. The thing is, is that I never would have been able to be physical again, you know, leaving football, leaving soccer and so on. The physicality, I just, I wouldn't even even been walking around. I mean, they were telling me at 25, your spine is starting to crush your lungs and all this kind of stuff. So there's really no excuse at all to not practice or try this because anybody can do it. And you can be tired and you can be exhausted. It's not going to the gym and trying to lift a whole bunch of weights. It's not uh, picking up some heavy object and hurting your back again. Anybody can do it. And the reason that a daily practice is so important and learning different methods. People always ask me, well, what's the best Qigong? Is David Kuhn's Qigong the best Qigong? Is Lee Holden's Qigong? What Qigong are you going to practice? That's the best practice for you. What do you like? 
What are you interested in? What moves you? What are you going to practice more than three days? Because at the end of 30 days, and we know this about life, it's called momentum. If your sickness or your disease, and my sickness and my disease had quite a momentum over 13 years, that spinal disease was getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And everybody around me, well, there's not anything you can do about it, you know, just uh, make the best of it. Qigong enters in, and the one thing that I exemplify with my life, I am by far not a perfect person. I am by far not enlightened or whatever. But what I've done over the last 37 years is I have practiced, 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 practiced daily, 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 daily. That's what brings the momentum. That's what brings the change. That's what brings the alchemy that brings us out of, as you said, like crisis, for example, into that growth, into that change, into that transformation. Beautiful, David. I mean, I think that's so important. We can return back to and lean into a practice that helps to transform whatever adversity is in our life into something positive. I and mean, we need that fertile soil, that mud to grow that beautiful garden. And, uh, you know, you're a walking example of how that transformation is possible. You use the word alchemy. And I think this is, it's such a great word. Can you talk a little bit about what alchemy means to you? Yeah, alchemy, I, I agree. I mean, you know, we're, we're very much on the same page with that. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a wonderful, wonderful word. And, uh, and, and it's this idea of taking heavy lead, which is the mud you were talking about earlier. Now we're getting a little more refined. We're getting a little more specific, which actually is what the Qigong practice is about. It's refining heavy qi. It's refining it and turning it into something else. You know, we have this saying in Western medicine and in uh, thermodynamics, the first law saying that energy can't be created, it can't be destroyed. It can only be changed from one form into another form. So in alchemy, we're taking the heavy energy, the lead, the muck, the, the troubles of our life, the heavy emotions like anger and sadness and fear, and we're alchemizing them. We're turning them into a finer substance that has the quality of gold, a fine, precious metal. And in the Taoist practices, in some of the traditions and practices, we get even more specific in this, where we're literally taking that lead and we're burning it in the lower Dantian, that cauldron, we're setting it on fire, we're refining that, bringing that energy into a finer substance into the middle Dantian, and then coming up into the upper Dantian. And for those that are not familiar with this idea of Dantian, Tian. Another time, perhaps we can get into it more, but briefly, I will say, in Western medicine, what do we have in these areas? We have the brain in the upper Dantian. We have the heart in the middle Dantian, both of which they can measure the energy field of. Mm -hmm. So it's not all foo-foo. They can measure it, and they do. EKG, ECG, they're measuring what's going on. And then in the lower Dantian, this is like a new discovery for them. They're calling it the second brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I mean, this is the three treasures. I mean, this is the alchemy of the three treasures, the mixing together. How do we create this alignment? I you know what I really heard you saying is, how do we use what we've been gifted? And, you know, I love the Taoist tradition of, hey, these are treasures and treasures need to be excavated and cultivated in very specific ways. And these Qigong practices help us to excavate the best energies of our mind, of our emotions, and of our bodies. And what a beautiful practice. What a way to reframe what modern life has been teaching us. You know, we're full of mental stress, emotional stress, physical pain. If we can get in there and excavate all this, there's gold underneath the surface. And just like your life has been an example of, when we can turn adversity into a treasure, we really develop, you know, for me, I, I really feel like we develop kinder, more compassionate hearts. Uh, and this is really where this healing energy comes comes through. Talk a little bit about healing and, and how, you know, we find ourselves in a really particular place in modern life that calls for a lot of healing energy. And, you know, this is an ancient practice, but we're living in a modern world. How do we bridge that gap? Well, I, I, first of all, I just want to say I so love the fact that you and I are gathering here right now and that you're asking me that question. 
uh, because really, you know, there's always been troubled times. I mean, go back 2000 years, whatever, there's always troubled times. But I do feel as you do and as you're alluding to, you know, this is a very challenging time for a lot of people. People have never faced anything like this before um, for them personally, you know. And my thing is, and, and my teaching over the years continues to be around this idea of there are so many things outside of us that we cannot control. So many things. And in my earlier life, I tried to control all of them. Mm -hmm. It caused me all kinds of pain and grief and struggle. And uh, over time, I've, lear I've learned that what I have control over are my own actions, my own thoughts, my own deeds, my own practice, my own breath my own flexibility, my own physical strength, my own endurance, my own attitude, the words that come out of my mouth. So I'm a very, very uh, firm believer in mastering yourself. It's why I sit here in my outfit and so on. I wear a lot of these, I have a lot of different costumes in my uh, um, you know, Japanese costumes, Chinese costumes, Korean costumes in my closet, but they have a lot of meaning to me. And uh, to me, it has to do with that mastering myself. I mean, I was in the mirror five minutes tying this up. You know, it's a, it's a meditation lacing this up. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one piece that I'm always saying to people is, yes, I'm a master, so on. People will say, well, what defines you as a master? I think every master, even though their master may say, hey, you're a master now, mm -hmm. you have to sort of own that yourself. But what I often say to people is, I am not your master. I have no interest in being your master. What I have the interest in doing is teaching you how to master yourself. So for me, that's what it's about because you know, and I know that if we change our attitude and we change how we feel and we change our mood, because well, all, let's face it, all of us have a bad day, right? Mm -hmm. But if we make our day better before we ever leave the house and you do that for yourself and sometimes you'll go, hey, you know what? I'm going to share this with my YouTube folks and you put on your YouTube and you teach them a 15 minute practice. How do you feel, Lee, after you teach people for 15 minutes? You weren't feeling great. You shared something great with the world. How do you feel 15 minutes after you just shared that with people, right? You feel fantastic, right? You feel better. They feel better. And you didn't even meet them in person. You know, you didn't even necessarily get even a, a direct feedback, but you feel better and you know it's already making the world a better place. Mm. Yeah, beautiful, David. I mean, this is it. I mean, you, you used a lot of words, YouTube and whatnot. This is an ancient practice for modern life. And we're using these modern, like we're on Zoom right now, it's having this great conversation. These are modern tools and technology can be a force of good when we put that consciousness and that positive healing energy. And that's the beautiful thing about this practice. Let's infuse this ancient wisdom into modern life in our modern ways where there's polarity or sometimes, yes, technology can be frustrating and there's all kinds of distractions, but we can also use it to grow our minds, our energy systems, to learn about ourselves. I love how you described mastery because you know, this practice is about self mastery. You know, even the word qi gong, gong means you know, skill at working with your chi. And what is chi? It's life. So we become skillful. We learn about our life and our energy, but this is a practice to work with life's energy. And all of a sudden we develop this mastery of ourselves. We, that's, that's the goal of this practice, develop some kind of self mastery. And what you said about where you put your uh, focus and attention on the inside, this is where we actually have power and we get confused that we want to have power over everything out there when we really haven't mastered everything going on in here. So what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful concept. And David, I know you're going to take us through a practice. Let's take our, uh, our listeners through a practice, give them a hands-on experience of your teaching. And I'm excited to, to take the class as well. So tell us a little bit about what we're going to learn. Awesome. So what I want to do is I want to go through a uh, short run of this uh set, this ancient set called the eight brocades. Now you're going to see different, uh, you know, this one being done first in certain routines or that one being done first. Uh, but it's amazing that most of this has stayed together because it was like the year 1630 or something like this, that they trace this back to, and they trace it back to a general, uh, general Yufei and, uh, he was uh, a general and therefore a soldier, and he had soldiers, 
And this was a set, the story is told, that he traveled around to all these different Qigong teachers to find the best exercises that he could to alleviate his soldiers of fatigue. So we're talking about getting our energy back, right? So this is an excellent exercise set to build some uh, energy in general, but also to build some, in my opinion, some muscle tendon strength. We're going to do certain types of breathing and movement. And again, you know, I have a very vast martial art background. And I said before, Qigong has helped me get through that kind of rigorous training. So I'm going to take you guys through it and uh, see, see what you think about it. Beautiful. I mean, you know, we we're talking about modern life in this ancient general, eight pieces of brocade. What a great thing. But you, we can imagine this is a very different kind of adversity. We're not fighting in wars, at least most of us aren't right now, but we, we are fighting inner battles, the battles That's of exactly stress right. and emotional challenges and the relational energy in modern life. And I think this is a great set just to reframe it, to use these movements as a way to transform whatever stress is going on in, in your life into something beautiful, back into vitality, back into purified energy. David, I'm looking yes, forward to this. I, I, absolutely. And, and the thing is, again, the key, the key word that I would have people grab onto there is the word fatigue. So even though these are soldiers and we're not, as you referenced, which is really important for people to understand, yeah, we're not soldiers, we're not going to war, we're not going to battle, but, but we need that energy. And fatigue is just such a big thing for people. And I don't think people realize that, um, uh, you know, there's so many factors that go into that but Qigong is going to hit every one of them. I, I tell people all the time, if you don't have energy, good luck getting that new job. If you don't have energy, good luck going to work that day and feeling good about yourself and so on. And so it just goes on. The list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So yep. practicing some type of Qigong, get that energy, get that positivity going, and then go about your day. Mm. Beautiful, David. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so the first thing that I have you do is just bring your feet out a little shoulder width, maybe a little wider, okay? It's very important, just, I'm gonna have you rock just a little bit on your feet for a moment. Because one of the practices that's so important when we practice Qigong is being grounded. A lot of people don't even, not even sure what that means. So just kind of rock on your feet back and forth. You can even lift one foot and the other foot just to get this rocking motion going, okay? It's not exactly part of eight brocades, it's just a little warm up right here, okay? The first exercise, typically traditionally taught in this form is an exercise called uplifting the sky. We're gonna bring our hands here. As we bring our hands here, like we're cupping this energy, this is like area of lower Dan Tian, okay? We're gonna interlace the fingers as the hands are traveling upward toward the chest. We're going to reach out. If this bothers you in any way, separate the hands so that you don't hurt your fingers. But otherwise, we're going to reach and we're going to press straight up like this. So first, I'm just going to show you the movement and the stretch, and then we're going to add the breath to it. So just stay here for a moment, reaching, stretching. If you can't reach this high, don't worry about it. Just go nice and easy. Right here, let the fingers come apart and exhale your breath as you're sinking your weight into a little bit of a horse stance, like you're sitting on a horse. On the way up now, we're gonna try and add the breath. We're gonna breathe in through the nose, nice, easy. Nice, easy. Reach up, stretch above your head. Hold that breath a little bit for a second. Exhale the breath. You can let the breath come out through the nose and or the mouth. Sink your weight. And as you're coming up, try and time your breath with your hands. Inhale, reaching up. Stretch. Exhale. I'm coming up again slow. Your speed. Reach, stretch, press. Exhale your breath. Now we're going to move into the second one because we have just a little bit of time to work with this. But first, we're going to do this little clearing exercise. So the hands are here. We're going to come back up to about the collarbone and we're going to bring our hands down slowly. Right now, I don't want you to worry about what you're doing with the breath. This could be a slow inhale, exhale. But right now, I want you to just move the hands like this. I love watching uh, the monks, for example, doing this. And they press. And it's not just that you're moving your hands. It's bringing your mind and your chi down, getting a little bit grounded. 
The second exercise is often called drawing the bow. I'm gonna move my right hand across my body. And to understand the first part of the movement, I want you to just tug on your left shoulder and the shirt that you're wearing. That's like the pulling of the bowstring. With your other hand, I'm gonna have you make this position here. You're gonna take a flat hand, you're gonna curl back your fingers, you're gonna leave the index finger sticking up, and you're gonna just kind of hold out this thumb. That's the traditional position of this. As I pull this string, I'm going to push out with that hand and I'm going to look, very important, look in that direction. Now, with my left hand that's being held out, I'm gonna come over with my left hand and I'm going to tug on my right shoulder just to understand that pulling motion. And then I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna push away. Once you understand the pulling motion, you don't need to tug your shirt anymore. We're just gonna come across and pull and push. As you do this, let out a little bit of an exhale, okay? And then come across and a little bit of an exhale. If you get into a rhythm and it feels right, as this hand's traveling across, you can try inhaling through the nose. Exhale here as you pull and push apart. And look. And again, come across here. Pull and push apart. From here, let the hands come down like we were holding earlier like this. Let them come back up to about the collarbone. And we're just going to clear this and wash it away. If you want to try it with the breath a little bit, we'll breathe in here. We'll exhale here. And go in through the nose. Notice I come up a little bit and then I'm going to sink. From here, we're going to go into this next exercise where I'm going to press down with my left hand. I'm going to reach up and I'm going to press right or press up with my right hand here, up toward the sky. So this here is called separating heaven and earth. I'm gonna give you the simpler version of this one. There's a slightly more complicated version. I'm just gonna give you the easy one today. We're gonna to press up and we're gonna press down. We hold for a second or two, and then we're gonna to start to make this transition. If you'd like to start to work with the breath, you're going to inhale slow through the nose as you're beginning to make this movement here, the transition. You exhale as you press apart. You're gonna inhale slow and easy through the nose. Exhale slow and easy through the nose and or mouth at the end. And right from this position, my left hand is high like this. Bring both hands to the middle here. Bring them in, circle them in, and then bring them down. We're now going to come up and we're going to clear like this. You'll often see this in the eight row caves that there's this little clearing exercise that we do in between each of the other exercises. The next exercise is called Wise Owl Turns Its Head to Eliminate Fatigue. So in this exercise, I'm gonna start you with your hands out here to your side. When we bring the hands in, we're gonna bring them in toward the lower dantian like this. And when we do that, we're going to inhale through the nose. So let's start over, we're gonna go back to here and we're gonna inhale through the nose. Now the hands will go out to the sides as I exhale and look to one shoulder, one over one shoulder or the other. I inhale as I come forward. I exhale as I turn my head, reaching and stretching. Inhale, exhale. And looking with your eyes over that shoulder, Inhale, exhale. And we're going to do one more. And we're going to come back to center. Bring your hands right back to this position we were in like so. Let them float down like this. 
Inhale as we come up. Exhale as we sink a little, if you'd like. Helps with a little extra grounding. A little more. Next exercise in this set, we're gonna start here with our hands on our knees. Okay, this one's a little tricky, um, so just do your best with it and uh, know your limits of flexibility and so on and so forth. So I'll show you like a middle range kind of um, exercise. So this one is called sway the head and shake the tail to eliminate heart fire, which essentially means stress. So from here, I'm going to lean my head down toward my knee. I'm going to come across with my head and I'm coming over to my other knee. I'm going to come back up to center. I'm now going to go back the other way. I'm going down to my left knee and across to my right knee. I'm going to come all the way back up to center. That's the basic movement. But now so important with this particular practice is the coordination of the breathing that we're going to do. So shake that out for a second like this. And I want you to think about this. We're going to do an inhale through the nose, okay? First, let's uh, do an inhale through the nose here. As you go this way to your right knee, I want you to exhale. I want you to pretend you're a dragon and you're setting the floor on fire. When you get to here, breathe in through the nose as you're coming up. Go back down toward that opposite knee. Exhale, set the floor on fire. Through the mouth, breathing, exhaling, setting the floor on fire. Inhale as you come up through the nose. Exhale as you go down, and I'm just going to let you do it because I can't breathe and talk to you at the same time. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you go back down. Exhale all the way. Keep breathing until you run out of breath and then without hurting yourself. And then inhale, come up. And then go back down, exhale. Inhale, come up, exhale, go down. Get that heat, get that fire out of your system. Come back up to center. If you're not used to this stance, again, just don't make it maybe as wide as this. Keep your hands here. You can use them to help prop yourself up. A nice little tap like this is good to help break up any of the stress or tension you may be feeling in those quadriceps, okay? And then from this position here, uh, bring yourself uh, to about shoulder width apart. We're gonna place hands, I'm gonna start you here. It's different ways to start this one off a little bit, okay? And again, we could also do our clearing exercise in between. That doesn't have to be done every time. So I'm going to leave that one out for right now. We're going to lay hands right here to this belly, lower belly. Uh, again, lower dantian. We're going to bring the hands, wrap them around kind of this kidney area. Okay. This next exercise is called two hands hold the feet to strengthen the waist and the kidneys. So right here, isolating this and holding your kidneys, at least in the vicinity of the kidneys, really good practice in and of itself. This one though, we're actually gonna go down the backs of the legs. If you are very flexible, then you can go down and hold your feet. I'm gonna start you with the uh, easier version first. So the easier version is, we're gonna inhale first, inhale. Exhale, as we exhale, hands will come down the backs of the legs, tracing the bladder meridian back there. We're gonna to go to the backs of the knees. The hands will circle around to the insides of the knees, come up, this is where the kidney meridians are. We're going to inhale as we reach up, and we're going to exhale as we sit our energy down. From this position, I will stand my knees back up a little bit more. I'll be a little bit taller. I'm going to inhale as I go around to my little back. Hold that breath for a second. I'm going to exhale my breath. This time, those of you more flexible, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to come all the way down, hold the backs of my feet. I'm going to come around the outsides of the foot, tracing the bladder meridian there. I'm coming up the insides of the legs. Here, as I inhale, again, that's where our kidney meridian is. And I'm going to exhale here as I sit my energy down. Once again, I'm going to inhale. Exhale. 
I'm going to inhale as I'm coming up. I'm going to exhale as I sit my weight down a little bit. Let's do one more because I love this one. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And let's just do one more. This is the one I'm going to say to you if you forget all the other ones. Remember this one from today's program. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. All right. The next exercise where you're going to see a little bit of that General's Marshall flavor is an exercise uh, called clench the fists and glare fiercely. So when you make a fist, we're going to have the hands like this, and then you're going to close all those fingers, and then you're going to take your thumb and put it over just the first two. This will keep your thumb from getting injured. It's also containing the chi. So we're now going to take one of your hands, okay? I'm going to take my right hand. I'm going to place it on my hip. When I place this on my hip, I want to make sure that if I were to open my hand back up, my palm is facing the ceiling. A lot of beginners like to do this and it cuts off the chi flow. You want it to be this way. So once you have that, I'm going to have you stick your other hand out in front of you. Okay. Maybe about, you know, the height of your chin or your chest doesn't matter exactly. Okay. So from this position here, what we're going to do is we're gonna be moving from a position of a horse stance. So if you go down into a horse stance for just a moment, as you come up and make yourself tall, you're gonna inhale through your nose. As you exhale, we're going to change the position of these two hands. Not everybody will get this the first day, okay? Don't worry about it. Inhale, we're gonna sit and One's pushing, one's pulling. And I'm also adding the sound of SH to this, like telling someone to be quiet a little bit. Shh. Now, what's the other part of the exercise? The other part of the exercise is to glare fiercely, which means if you desire, and you don't have to, but you can make a little bit of a fierce space. This is all supposed to be very good. And it's not just supposed to be, I've practiced it for a long time. I believe that it is. Uh, very good for the liver and detoxing the liver. So if we squat down again, we're here, we lift up, we inhale, and we shh. And we come up. And don't hurt yourself with that sound, just a little bit of shh. And up. And shh. And up. Inhale, exhale, shh. One more. Right here, we are going to do a clearing exercise. So we're going to inhale. Let's go big this time. Really, really big. Inhale, exhale. Can you even use a little bit of a sound of SH, but you're like dissipating and it's not concentrated. It's just let it stress out. Good. One more. And here comes our last one, really good for eliminating fatigue as well. All right, the pay attention to the backs of my heels here, the back of my foot and my heels. I'm gonna show you the footwork part of it first. You're just going to lift your heels and then click them. Like don't hurt yourself, your balance isn't good. Just you know, lift up a little and come down, all right? But what we need to do is we're gonna counterbalance this movement going backwards and this uh, stomping of our heels a little bit with a movement of our hands raising up like this. This is going to be the counterbalance, okay? But you have to coordinate it. So it's a little tricky for some to begin with. We lift the heels and then as the heels hit, there's your counterbalance. So traditionally this was done seven times. So let's try it seven times. We're gonna lift and one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here, inhale big. This is 
A lot of times I like to call this the waterfall. Sometimes this is called uh, bringing down the heavens, okay? Inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose, coming down, you can let the rest out through the mouth. Wash it away. A little bit of like um, heat in your breath, like a dragon breathing, where you're just breathe out the stress a little bit, a little tiny bit of tension in your body. Exhale that last part out through the mouth. Excellent. Now, just bring yourself here, feet about shoulder width apart. We are almost done. That set is mostly complete. I'm going to have you bring middle fingertips together. Touch this lower rim of the belly button. Okay, the bottom of your belly button. You're going to hold your hands flat to your lower dantian. This is where your lower dantian is. In Japanese martial arts, we call this area the hara. Okay, just hold it for a second. Just for one minute with me, if you would. I want you to take your attention and I want you to put it in your feet. Make sure you notice your feet are on the floor. I want you to take that attention of yours and I want you to place it onto your hands. And I want you to take that attention and turn it a little more inward to the space behind the belly button called the lower dantian. For now, you can just think of it as the space there. And I want you to take three breaths in through the nose, out through the nose, your speed, don't rush. And that will complete our practice. Now, if you're like me and you're practicing, very important here, Lee, um, we want to just march our feet here for a moment and just kind of get grounded because there's two very important ingredients with Qigong practice, which Lee knows, but people at home may not know, is that when we're practicing Qigong, we want to gather that Qi, right? But we also need to stay anchored and grounded because if we're not, we get a little too spacey, a little too lightheaded, and we can't maintain the practice. So take a breath. Join me back over here. What'd you think of that one, Lee? David, I, I love the eight pieces of the brocade and I love the way you taught it. How simple was that? And the way you put it together in a short, concise practice that just gave us results. I feel great. And uh, you, you can tell you're a master teacher. David, where can people find out more about you? Do you have any a website, any programs coming up? Just share with the audience a little bit about yourself and where they can find you. Sure. Um, they can find us at qigongawareness.com, and we spell qigong, Q-I-G-O-N-G, the old school way. And uh, we actually have a free event coming up uh, this Saturday, um, a sponsored event uh, from a foundation, and uh, it's Qigong for Peace, which for me means qigong for inner peace, and it's a two-hour webinar on Saturday. And people are welcome to come. And as you alluded to earlier, you know, I mean, what a better topic, what a better subject. Um, we all need that inner peace in our life because to me, that's the only way that we, you know, when, we, when we're younger, at least for myself, and I think a lot of us uh, that are in the spiritual community and so on, we have fantastic ideas about wanting to change the world or different things, but we're all confused ourselves. And then somewhere along the way, we learn through practice that like, if I practice inner peace myself and I have it here, then I can pay it forward there. And that, that will come back to you. That will come back to me. So uh, I definitely uh, invite people to come and participate in that program if they desire. And it will be recorded too, so they can find it on the YouTube channel, uh, Qigong Awareness and my name, David J. Kuhn, so. Wonderful. David, what a great session. So nice to meet with you. So great to talk about Qigong Likewise. and be here together. Likewise. Thank you so much, Lee. It was a pleasure meeting you. And again, uh, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm just stoked that you and I have connected and that we've shared our energies here today. 
at a time when the world needs us. And uh, back when we were five years old, you know, we probably could have hung out and played some different games. And yet here we are, we would have been playing soccer together. Absolutely. You know? uh, but, but, you know, here we are, we were a little more grown up or whatever. And uh, we're coming out to the world at a time where the world needs us and uh, joining forces over something so profound, this Qigong practice. And so uh, I'm just blessed and grateful. So thank you. I look forward to uh, seeing you again. Yeah, absolutely, David. Keep up the great work and let's continue to share this you beautiful too. healing energy with the world. Absolutely. All right, all. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Take care for now.